world here. And today we're going to look at how to insert a wait time into a line of code or into a program with existing lines of code. So what I'm going to do here is teach a small program. I'm going to create a new routine under Routines, File, New Routine. I'm going to verify that everything's what I need. This is a procedure. It's not a function nor a trap. Uh, we'll talk about those later. Routine 2 is a good enough name for me. If I didn't like that name, then I could just go here and rename it. In this case, RT2. No special parameters are required. And this is going to go in the module number one. So we have to verify all these things are correct. So I hit OK. And I've created a new routine. What I'm going to do here is create a very simple program because there's some things we have to look at when we're using the wait time feature in a line of code to begin with. The wait time is always measured in seconds. So what I'm going to do is teach this position as a home position for the robot. And I'm going to have it just make a motion over here somewhere, come into a defined point, and then return back to the home. So to do that, to begin with, I'm going to use Add Instruction. And I'm going to go to my Common menu. This can be found under Others, but I'm just using Common. And I'm going to choose Move ABS JP. Now by tapping that, it has inserted this line of code into my program, essentially teaching this as my position. Here we can see we're using the generic asterisk or an undefined name. We'll look at the differences between this and defined names in a later video. But I want this to be a home position. So I'm going to create a home position called Home2. Very simple. I'm gonna the last one I created was home, and that's why it's showing this up like it is. Normally, it's just going to default to like PT1 or PT10 or PT20. Now, I want this home position to be global. I can localize it and make it only good in one routine or one module. Storage type should be constant. I don't want this data changing. I don't want it changing, and we'll talk about the differences between those as the series goes on. This is the only robot in this cell. Should I have multiple robots in this cell, multi-move or something like that, I may have to identify the robot that this home position is assigned to. I can localize it. Since I created it global up here, none of this is going to matter. But if I had chosen local here, then I'm going to have to tell the system which module and which routine that this home position is valid in. I'm going with a global so that I can reuse this in multiple programs. If I give it dimensions, it became a physical object at this point. I'm completely changing what I'm doing here, so dimensions are not necessary for this particular setup. So here I'm going to go OK, and I'm going to make sure to choose this home too. There we go. And I hit OK. So now I've taught that home position. So at this point, I'm just going to jog my robot away from that home position. And I'm going to teach a move J, a joint move, to right here. So to do so, I've already got my robot in position. So I go back to add instruction, and this time I choose move J for joint move. And it's going to ask me, do I want it above or below in this case? So I'm going to hit below, and it automatically inserts it. So I just taught that position. If I do not need to name this point, then I'm good to go just like it is. But if I do want to name the point, I'm going to tap this area of the screen, and it'll take me here. Now keep in mind, on these argument screens, we're going to see these argument screens a lot when we're inserting code, when we're inserting logic. Anything that shows up, like this P1 for example, any name that shows up below your new or on this side means that that point already exists. So if I try to use P1 here, my robot's not going to go to where it's sitting at right now. It's going to go to wherever P1 is originally at when it was taught. So I want to create a new point here. And I want to just call this one P, P2. I'm going to call it P2 for point 0.2. Or, excuse me, P2, not 5. Okay, all right. Now I can localize this point name to just this module and program if I chose to, or routine. Storage type should be constant for points. We don't want this to be variable or persistent, and we will see the differences later. Once again, which mechanical unit is this point valid for? In my case, with one robot in the cell, TROB1. And since I chose global, it really wouldn't matter what I chose here for module or routine. But if I wanted to make this point local to a specific routine, I would have to choose the module and the routine. Once again, we do not give it dimensions because then it changes and becomes something totally different. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to 
Make sure that P2 is up here in my argument, and it is. So, okay. So now, I can actually don't even have to move the robot again. I'm going to just use a copy and paste feature because I want it to return where it began. So I'm going to choose my edit. I'm going to copy this line of code. Then I'm going to highlight where I want this to go below. I want it to go below this point, so I have to highlight this. And I'm going to hit paste. And there we go. So now if I test this out, it's going to give me an error. And the reason I know it's going to give me an error is because I do not see my program pointer over here. So when I hit PP to cursor, I'll get an error. And it tells me to move PP to routine because the execution stack has lost the program pointer. So I'm going to go PP to routine, choose my routine again, back inside of it, and here is my pointer. So now I'm ready to run this. And I'm going to go ahead and run this in at 50% should be good. And I'm going to run it in continuous so we can watch it run. Hit play. And we should see the robot go home. Now it's going to go to P2. And back home. And since I have it in continuous, then it will repeat this process indefinitely until something stops it or I stop it. So let's look at how to add in a timer here, or a wait time, I should say. One thing we have to take into consideration is, is the point that I'm putting the wait time in an exact or fine position, or is it an approximated position or a zone? In this case, we see zone. So we know that when it went to this P2, which was down here, the zone of 50 means the robot will approach it within 50 millimeters, but it will bypass that point and exit to the next point in the program without ever coming to a complete stop. And that has a big impact on how the wait time works. So let's look here. I'm going to choose a fine move for this particular P2 and hit OK. A fine move will take it exactly to that point, stopping, then reading the next line, then moving. So when we use zones, we're giving the robot the ability to read ahead. It'll read this wait, wait time ahead of time and it will not wait as long. And we're going to we're going to demonstrate that. First of all, see, I got a fine move here. Next, I want to add my wait time in. So I'm just going to scroll under common and I see wait time. When I select it, it's going to bring me to this screen. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of variables here that have been created. Um, maximum wait times there's a lot of different variables don't use these variables unless you know exactly what they're for and unless you have set them up and you're very familiar with where these can be changed and where they can be used try to stay away from them now if i want the robot to wait for two seconds then if i hit new and i go to name here and i say two and hit ok it's not a valid data name if i look back i'll see that this is name it's not number it's not a numerical value so to enter a numerical value on any argument screen, we have to use this one, two, three button down here. So I'm gonna hit the one, two, three, it brings up this keypad, and now I can type in two for two seconds, hit okay, hit okay again, and now we see it is in my lines of code. So the robot should start at home, make a motion to P2, this is a fine move, so once it reaches P2, it'll wait for two seconds, then it'll go back home, go back to P2, wait for another two seconds. So let's test this out. Okay, so here we go. All right, it's on its way to P2. And once it gets there, it should stop and wait for two seconds. And there we go. So putting a wait time in our line of code is easy, but something you have to take into consideration is the zone before the robot reaches that. Because if I put a zone here, and I'm going to change this to a zone of 50. If I have one already predefined, there we go. A zone of 50 here. It tells me my program pointer will be lost. Anytime you go to making a lot of changes in your code, it'll lose the program pointer. So you just say, okay, I see it's gone. I just hit debug, PP to routine again. Right back into my routine. And I got my program pointer back. But now, with this zone of 50, what this does is this gives the robot the ability to not just bypass this point, to sort of cut this corner here, but it also gives it the ability to read ahead. 
So what's going to happen is once the robot's within 50 millimeters of this position, it's going to start that wait time of two seconds. So it's not going to wait at this position, as we can see. It depends on how long it would take the robot to enter that 50 millimeter zone, come to that point, and escape the 50 millimeter zone. If it's going to take longer than two seconds for it to do that, then it's just going to keep running. So let's see what happens here. It's going home. Now it's going to P2. Notice how there was just barely a pause. And that's because it began counting that two seconds once it was 50 millimeters on the approach side of P2. And it calculated that time into when it was 50 millimeters on the exit side. It just came to a complete stop very, very quickly. Now watch what happens, watch what happens when we change this to a zone of one. Zone of one. Lose my program pointer again, so PP to routine, right back in there. And let's watch this. All right, now watch the difference in it. Watch the difference in this. It's going to go to that point. And since it was just a one millimeter zone, it didn't start counting that two seconds until it was a millimeter away from that point and factored in a millimeter leaving from that point. So you could get completely different results. If I have a bigger zone right here, let's put an even bigger zone and see if we can make it not stop at all. I'm going to put a zone of 200 millimeters. And now... Let's see what happens. I don't believe it'll stop at all on this zone. And it's going down and boom, there it was. The zone was too big. It would took the robot longer to get through the zone and escape the zone than the timer was set up for. So in this case, we see no stop at all, basically no stop at all. So you have to be very careful of that. You have to be very careful of these wait times and timers and setting outputs and things like that, all of which we're going to cover. But that is how to insert the wait time. Let's look again. I'm going to stop it, and I'm just going to put another a wait time below this home right here. So I'm going to go to Add Instruction. Now, you can find this under multiple menus. It's under multiple of your menus here, but Common is the quickest and fastest one. I'm going to hit Wait Time. Then I'm going to use my 1, 2, 3 button to enter in a value, and I hit OK. Now I hit OK again, and now i got a wait time here. So let's play that through one time. Wait, and... Notice how the arrow moved. Notice how the arrow moved. Watch, watch this arrow. All right, it's reading ahead, watch. It's gonna jump down here and read, and see the robot's still right there. So it didn't give us the whole five seconds because we have this zone here. With this zone, it's going to start reading ahead. And that's going to cause problems if you're not uh, extremely, you know, aware of that as you begin the program. All right, so that's pretty much it for adding in a wait time. Make sure to check out future videos as we're going to cover every single instruction on these menus, one video at a time. And we're going to look at even some more in-depth things and, and get into a lot of different aspects of programming. So throw a like and subscribe if you can. Uh, make sure to share the video. You know, I want to put out as many of these as I can. I just want to make sure that people want to see them, though. So thanks a lot for watching. Hope you have a good night. For now, gold out.